I'm Brady Dunaway and I curate the Mississippi Folk Blues Outreach uh, Zoo or the live collection. And we have a very diverse array of insects and uh, other arthropods which we use to educate the public. Uh, many people find live insect displays engaging and interactive and so we really like to heavily utilize those. We've been using them for about two years now and the collection has grown to include a number of exotic insects as well as several native species. Uh, some pretty obscure things that not many people actually have in cultivation. But what you see up here is pretty common uh, and I'll run through about four things that we have with you. The first is part of a group of insects that many people are very, very uh, anxious about. Not many people have love for the cockroaches as a whole, and that's what these guys are. These are giant South American cave cockroaches. And they are not like the cockroaches that you would find in your pantry or in a restaurant or some other similar uh, human habitation. These guys live solely in caves and they live in hollow trees primarily in uh, northern South America and southern Central America. And what you see here is an adult male and then a young specimen that's uh, not quite mature yet. You'll notice it doesn't have wings. Uh, whenever they mature they'll get these very long wings, but they actually cannot fly with them. And then right here, we've got an arachnid. Arachnids, of course, are like the group that includes spiders, ticks, mites, etc., um, scorpions, tarantulas. And so this is part of a kind of an obscure group called the vinegaroon, or the tailed whip scorpion. And by far, it's the most intimidating looking species we have in our collection, but it's actually probably one of the most timid. And the reason why is because it virtually is blind. It, it cannot see very much, if at all, anything at all. And uh, these lights are actually probably a bit much for it. But you'll notice that up front, it has these modified front legs. And before it takes a step, it feels just in the same way that a, a blind individual uses a cane to perceive their environment through touch. And it uses those to locate prey. They are predatory, so they hunt cockroaches, beetles, crickets, etc. Uh, and they don't have any way to bite. They, uh, they, they can't bite people. They can't sting people. Their one defense is by a chemical means through this long tail, hence the name whip scorpion, um, or tailed whip scorpion, where they can shoot acetic acid out of that tail. And acetic acid sounds really terrifying. It sounds like something that could do serious harm, but it actually just smells and tastes like vinegar. So if you are in the deserts or in South Florida, where you can also find these, and you're a ground squirrel or a bird or one of the, the many animals that, that feed on insects and you try to feed on one of these, it can actually aim this over its head in any number of directions and it can actually spray, spray the, uh, the acetic acid up into the face and the eyes and the mouth. And it won't hurt or blind you, it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. It's just kind of noxious, so you don't really, it's kind of like if you try to bite into a cheese pizza and it starts to taste like vinegar. You just kind of lose your appetite. Let's see, we'll come to these guys before we move on to the last thing. Now these guys are very cryptic, uh, cryptic insects. Cryptic means that an insect is slow to move, camouflages into the environment. It doesn't just camouflage, it also acts the part of what it's trying to look like. So these guys are Australian spiny leaf insects and they look exactly like what their name says they are. Uh, they look like spiny leaves. And in the wild, they feed in the canopies of eucalyptus trees in Australia and New Zealand. Eucalyptus is the same plant that koala bears eat. And in captivity, we feed them on a variety of oak, bramble, blackberry, rose leaves, things like that. And they are absolutely just really cute. A lot of people that we have the outreach, we do the outreach with, love it because they're always trying to climb for a higher space. So if I reach out, then they look like they're trying to give kids hugs. You know, they look like they're trying to reach up and ask for a, a hug. Uh, but really harmless. If you pick them up, sometimes it can be a little uncomfortable to people who don't know what to expect because those spines on them are pretty stiff and that deters predation, things that try to eat them. But what's more, the nymphs of these, the babies of these, will have this, the abdomen, the tail end, that curls up over the body, and in doing so, they actually mimic scorpions. So they employ mimicry to look like something which could harm anything trying to eat them. They employ camouflage to look like the dead leaves, the spiny leaves and the twigs, and they employ crypsis, which is where they will actually uh, kind of sway back and forth like a leaf in the breeze to just not only look like a dead leaf or a branch, but they'll actually also act the part as well. So really, really cool uh, things. And we have, these are part of the group of insects called phasmids. We have native phasmids, we have a few walking stick species, but none that really employ the camouflage or the mimicry to the degree that these do. They're really impressive. And then the last thing we have here is everybody's favorite. Uh, 
everybody loves, even if they're scared of them, they love to see a tarantula. And this is a Honduran curly hair tarantula. Uh, looks kind of like a teddy bear to me, just a big fluffy ball of fur. And you know, I don't know why people want puppies and kittens. I mean, you can have a tarantula, you don't have to take it for walks. <laughs> it's pretty great. Uh, but sometimes they can be, a lot of people think that you can just pick up a tarantula. And while you can with some species, you have to condition them to being handled and being uh, cared for in your hands. But these guys, this, this one in particular, she's a little touchy, she's a little jumpy, so we don't handle her too much. We just kind of leave her on the substrate. There are many species of tarantulas. Uh, this is just one of several, both in the Old World, the Americas, and uh, in the New World, the Americas, and in the Old World, in Africa, Asia, and Australia. So. These are just a few of a much larger zoo. We have like 15 to 16 species of cockroach. We have like 12 or 13 species of tarantula. We have several other arachnids and insects. So uh, it's mostly open to the public. Anybody who wants to come see us when everything's get back to normal is welcome to. You can help us feed and uh, kind of see what a daily routine in the zoo looks like. Or if you come check us out at any one of our outreach events, you're likely to see a whole table covered in live things that you can, you can handle and touch and interact with. So come check it out. Thank you.